Welcome back, welcome back. This is still why in the morning and you're on time for the first interview of the day. If you're just joining us now, we have come from Abanta with Grace and now we have moved to Sport on Tech. And today we're discussing something that might seem serious, but it's not that serious. We're going to break it down in a very simple way so that you can understand it. We're talking about cloud uh, computing. And for that, we have been joined by Paddy Adala, who's a cloud architect, to help us with the conversation. Karibu sana, Paddy. Thank you very much. Glad to have you with us. Lovely to be here. Feels nice. Okay. Yeah. Tell us, uh, for someone who's just hearing a cloud architect for, for the first time, what does a cloud architect do? Happily. So mm -hmm. I work as a cloud architect at Dimension Data. Mm -hmm. And my role as a cloud architect is I listen to customers' concerns or customer needs in regard to their need to move to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I look at how their infrastructure or their services are currently set up. Mm -hmm. We draw up solutions for them, discuss this with the clients, and finally migrate them to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So I'm a superhero for making sure clients are happy as they run their infrastructure and services in the ah. cloud. Okay, so it's uh, more IT related? Yes, it's an IT related role. Uh, okay, awesome. So now tell us now, what is a cloud for, for those that also don't know about, about sure. it? Sure. So the cloud, I think, is a name that people came up with because mm -hmm. of the icon looks fancy and shows that you are somewhere that's not... Where yeah, on, ground. on, on the <laughs> ground. Uh -huh. But ideally, cloud computing is the adoption of IT services that you consume mm -hmm. that are not within your, your reach. However, when you look at the type of cloud services we have, then you realize that we have private cloud, mm -hmm. which is services that you run on premises, that is in your data center. For example, Y254 mm -hmm. would have a data center somewhere to process your uh -huh. computing needs. Uh -huh. And then we have public cloud, and this is the one people commonly refer to as the cloud, okay. which is services that you consume from cloud vendors, AWS, mm -hmm. Azure, Oracle, and Google. Okay. You also have a hybrid cloud where you work, or you rather you consume on-prem services together with cloud services mm -hmm. and you have a community cloud finally which is what institutions like universities would have where you share resources mm -hmm. from a common point we'd call that a community cloud okay so we have four types of clouds you've mentioned private public hybrid and community, and community. so yeah. we want to understand you've at least you've given an example of the public cloud uh, that uh, aws the azure uh, Google Cloud, part of it. Now, the private cloud. Yeah. What is an example of a private cloud that we use here, we can use here, uh, you know, in um, Y254? So, in Y254, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a room you call your server room, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. in this server room, you have computers or rather and machines mm -hmm. which handle the processing of the signals you generate, how you propagate it, mm -hmm. and how your broadcasters view your services. Mm -hmm. So that's ideally why 254 is private cloud. Okay. Yes. And then the hybrid is a mix of both? Yes. A oh. hybrid now is because you have streaming services on the internet mm -hmm. and the streaming services get the content from the on-premises devices, mm -hmm. then you have a hybrid model where you're using the internet services together with mm -hmm. the services that you have on premises. Okay, and the community is where there's shared resources there's like shared resources between organizations. Say the government uh -huh. uh, the government's cloud is a is a community cloud because it's shared services between different agencies mm -hmm. of the government. Okay. So what type of um, cloud would a person need to share personal data in? Why would you want to share personal data? To, to save your personal data. Ah, to save personal yes, data. Yes. So ideally, you save your personal data in mm. the public cloud. And one of the services that people have largely consumed mm. over a long time is storage services. That's for Google storage services for mm. Android users and iCloud for iPhone users. Mm -hmm. So those are public cloud services that okay. we as individuals consume on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. One for storage, 
two for email services, mm. and three for communication services as well. Okay. What's the difference between Google Drive and Google Cloud? What's the difference between Google Drive and Google Cloud? Mm -hmm. So Google Drive, Google Drive is a storage service. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a drive where you store your photos, you store your files, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And Google Drive has been there for a long time as a mm -hmm. personalized service. Mm -hmm. However, when you look at Google Cloud now as a cloud service, it encapsulates much more than storage. Mm -hmm. The aspect of computing comes in, where you can now run your computing services inside Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. It encapsulates data analytics, where you can take advantage of data science tools mm -hmm. within Google Cloud. So Google Drive is primarily a storage service, but Google Cloud now comes with much more than just storage. You mm -hmm. have computing, you have storage, Mm -hmm. and you have data analytics to go with as well. Okay, and um, there's this, um, you've mentioned the different types of clouds. What, what's the comparison between an on-premise and uh, cloud computing? Sure, so let's start with how you get the infrastructure. When you want to set up an on-premises cloud service, mm -hmm then first you have to scope for equipment. You have to know what computing needs does our organization have. This influences the type of devices or the power of the devices that you will buy. Mm -hmm. This will power requirements in terms of powering the equipment come in, cooling mm -hmm. requirements come in, resources to manage these in terms of the IT guy, the storage guy, and the power guy come in. Okay. So you see, as you're setting up your own premises, computing services, then you have a lot of gears moving individually mm -hmm. to come together and make up the on-premises cloud computing services. Mm -hmm. However, or on the other hand, when you look at public cloud services, mm -hmm. if we need computing services today for a public cloud. All you have to do is create an account and allocate resources. Spin up the instances that you'd like to consume and start moving. So okay. that's one of the comparison points that you have when you look at on-prem mm -hmm. versus cloud. There's a cost on-prem, an initial cost mm -hmm. of procuring the devices that you will use. Whereas on cloud, because it's largely a pay-as-you-go model, mm -hmm. you simply create your account and you start using it. Okay. Two for on-prem is you need to take care of your security. Your IT team are the ones who are going to do your patching. Your IT team mm -hmm. are the ones who ensure that regular updates are applied. In the cloud model, it is the cloud vendor who is responsible for patching of the software or the services mm -hmm. that they offer you at a high level. Mm -hmm. When you go on-prem and you need to upgrade or say Y254 is the services or rather the computing resources that you have are no longer enough for your requirements, you would need again to procure new devices. And this comes with the lead time for shipping from the vendors. Mm -hmm. However, in the cloud, we have elasticity. So elasticity means that when you observe that it is not enough, say on your phone you observe that it is slow, you mm -hmm. would need to buy a new phone, right? Yeah. But in the cloud, when you observe that it's not enough for you, mm -hmm. you simply increase the capacity of what you've provisioned and you're good to go. Okay. So that there you enjoy the, the benefit of, elast elasticity. of elas elasticity. Okay, so I'm getting there from uh, comparing the two sides for a business to probably advise them to, to do the cloud uh, model. You, you need, so usually you need to look at your goal as a business first mm -hmm. as, as you explore which computing services would be ideal for you. Mm -hmm. Because again, this is the, co this is the this is cost versus risk. Mm -hmm. So is it easier to set up a data center for you than move to the cloud? Mm -hmm. But that means that you lose out on elasticity compared to those who sit in the cloud. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Is it more secure for you to run in the data center than run in the cloud? See, in the cloud, your services are away from you. But within your data center, if you do not need to access the internet, mm -hmm. then you'd happily run a secure system on premises. So okay. you'd, you'd really need to consider your business drivers for mm -hmm. adopting some of these services before you make a decision on them. Mm. Okay, speaking about cost, which one is more cost effective or does it also depend on the needs that you have? I'll give you an example of a startup, mm -hmm. right? You and I come up with this startup and we need computing services. Mm -hmm. For us to procure a server, a proper server, we'd need to project how much computing would we need over a period of time. Mm -hmm. We'd need to order it, have it shipped, <coughs> install it, and then bring up our services. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the cloud, we'd need to simply create an account, mm -hmm. provision our services, and get moving. Mm -hmm. So in that case, then, it's easier for us to quickly adopt public cloud services so that you can start production. Okay. So cost, again, is influenced by your business needs. Okay. However, in the cloud, it's a pay-as-you-go model. So mm -hmm. you can always adjust your cost. You can always optimize your usage mm -hmm. so that you can have better running costs in the okay. public cloud. All right. Being that it's pay as you, uh, a pay-as-you-go model, what happens uh, if, let's say, that we're having some trouble in the company and I can't pay for like, the next two months? What, what happens to my data? So we mentioned that it's a pay-as-you-go. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Therefore, you build at the end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. And depending on the cloud service provider, they have different service agreements with those who consume their resources. So there's always a grace period that you're given and you're constantly or rather continuously reminded about your pending bills. Mm -hmm. In the event that that grace period lapses, the cloud service provider notifies you that your account is due for closure mm -hmm. and your data will be lost. Because, again, it's a business. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> Explains a lot. Now, to um, the cloud deployment method, uh, models rather, what, what are some of those? So, deployment depends. Again, it goes back to our public. You can either deploy as a public cloud, you can deploy as a private cloud mm -hmm. that is on-prem, can deploy a hybrid model, and mm -hmm. you can use a community, community. cloud. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's basically that? Yes. Oh, all right. I thought it was something different. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I That's know. Okay. Uh, also, um, there's uh, this thing that you, you said, you mentioned in a previous conversation that you were in about data security. It being one of the concerns that there is with the technology. You said data security is a shared responsibility between the provider and the user. Tell us a little bit about that. So I'd like to start off with an with a, an, a weird off example. Mm -hmm. When you buy a house, you buy a house with locks and a security system. Mm -hmm. However, it is your responsibility to lock the house at night, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The same applies to the cloud. So in the cloud, security is a shared responsibility mm -hmm. adventure between the cloud service provider and you as the user. Mm -hmm. The responsibility of the cloud service provider is to secure the infrastructure that they give you. Mm -hmm. That is the hardware, wherever it is set up, and the network requirements ensuring that security patches are continuously applied to them. Mm -hmm. You as the user comes in with your data. Therefore, it's your responsibility to ensure that access to data in the cloud is secure. That is, who can access your data? The users within your organizations. Mm -hmm. How do they access this data? Is it using secure protocols to access it? Mm -hmm. And are you logging how they access the data and what they do with this data? Mm -hmm. So that in case of an incident, mm -hmm. you can always track and remediate. So again, security in the cloud is a shared responsibility model mm -hmm. where the service provider takes care of security of the cloud, and that is the infrastructure and mm -hmm. the underlying services. Whereas you as the user takes care of security in the cloud, that is access to your data mm -hmm. and how it is used. Okay, makes a lot of sense. So you take care of access and then they take care of the infrastructure. Of the underlying infrastructure. All right, makes sense. What about data recovery? What happens, do, do they lose data also? And what happens if they do? Good, good question. Mm -hmm. 
data recovery depends on how you set it up. So we usually have different data recovery models again for the cloud. And this is initiated by you as the user, because again, when you decide that this data is not mm -hmm. important after generation, mm -hmm. then you can as well let it go. However, if this data is important to you, then you need to come up with proper backup mm -hmm. and recovery methods for your data. Mm -hmm. So one is you could simply backup and restore whenever you need it. Mm -hmm. Two is you could always run your resources actively mm -hmm. so that if one of your nodes fail, then the other one is always up to recover. Okay. So depending on your needs for recovering your data or securing your data after use, mm -hmm. then you choose how your data is ideally backed up and how it is restored mm -hmm. when you need it. All right. What about um, data privacy? Because I know we have a data privacy law in Kenya, but does it also apply to international companies now that we're dealing with Amazon, we're dealing with Google? Does it apply in case of, you know, data breach? It does. One, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, security is, is, is a shared responsibility, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So whenever there's a breach from the cloud service provider, it is their responsibility to remediate. Okay. Whenever there's a breach because you as the user mm -hmm. neglected something, you need to remediate. Mm -hmm. When it comes to data policy and data residence, that's mm -hmm. where a law comes in. And the requirement from the office of the data protection uh, office mm -hmm. is as much as you're consuming public cloud services, you need to have a copy of that data locally within the country. Mm -hmm. So as long as you meet the condition that you have a copy of the data you're running or processing in the cloud within the country, then you're good to go and free to use cloud resources. Okay. And addition, an, as an addition to that, a lot of the services we consume locally, especially in the fintech industry, mm -hmm. is processed in the cloud. Many of them are using AWS, many of them are using Azure, mm -hmm. because as long as they have met the requirement of the Office of the Data Protection Policy, mm -hmm. where they have local copies of the data they process in the cloud mm -hmm. within the country, then they're free to go and use next-gen technologies, not okay. limited by lead times and physical servers. All right, well, what, because I'm, I'm getting you, know, there's no bad side to, to it from what you're saying. What are some of the challenges that come with, uh, you know, cloud computing? What are some of the challenges that come with cloud computing? Yeah. So there's usually a joke about people setting up a system administrator who's set up cloud services. Mm -hmm and the, a, an exorbitant bill comes in at the end of the month. Okay. What this means is you need to be proactive to control your billing and resource usage. And mm -hmm. the cloud has come with solutions to this. You can schedule your computing needs so that at night they're shut off. Whereas mm -hmm. on on-prem, you can't switch off a server and come put it back on oh. in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. in the cloud, you can always control your billing. You mm -hmm. can set up alerts mm. and budgets. If you'd like to consume $500, you mm -hmm. would put an alert at 400 Okay. And when that threshold is met, mm -hmm. you'd receive an email or, the, or a text mm -hmm. to go and check into your resources. Mm -hmm. There's always the risk of, because you're running in the internet, mm -hmm. you as the user doesn't properly secure your environment. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you need to bring in security consultants to ensure that your ship is watertight and you don't have a hole because, again, lose lips, sink ships. Okay. <laughs> All right. But, but is there also an aspect of lack of control to an extent? Because uh, as an organization, when you uh, put, uh, take in the cloud services, you're sort of relinqu relinquishing ooh, the English in the Qatar, ah. relinquish <laughs> some of the services to, uh, to them such as the, you know, the IT management. So is that an aspect of lack of control too? As a business, if I can relinquish mm -hmm. <laughs> <You> got it. <laughs> my IT services uh -huh. to focus on my core mission, I would be happy. 
because this means that if I'm a vendor and I can focus on my customers mm -hmm. rather than the back end of my IT requirements, mm -hmm. it means that more time goes into my core business okay. and I become more productive. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, it is important though to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed in terms of control. Mm -hmm. Because if you absolve control, then catastrophe looms. Okay. So as much as you're, you're relinquishing control <laughs> I love how you've done over it. your uh, IT <laughs> services, uh -huh. it means that if it's set up properly, and you're not really giving up control, it's just the mundane services mm -hmm. that boggle your IT team every day, such as updates, patches, provisioning of new resources, mm -hmm. and a lot of time spent in tasks that have been automated, okay. reinventing the wheel, then you can now enjoy automation and the ease of service delivery, focusing on your mission as a business. All right, makes a lot of sense then. <laughs> what about, uh, as we come to a close on the conversation, um, where's the incorporation of AI, IoT and everything in cloud technology? There's a lot of it actually and, and I think for a lot of people who are pursuing or rather a lot of people looking to consume AI services, mm -hmm. then the cloud is a really good place for you to start. So? For one, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a whole community around AI who operate in the cloud because for us to set up AI in here, mm -hmm. we'd have to buy capable servers. We'd okay. have to bring in experts to set the baseline for our infrastructure mm -hmm. and then start building services on it. Mm -hmm. However, in the cloud, AI is consumed mm -hmm. as a service. You remember earlier on, before the show, you were talking about infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platform as a service. Mm -hmm. So the cloud offers you a platform as a service where the baseline of the infrastructure has already been set up for you. Therefore, you as a business, say, if I was a financial industry who would like to do analytics on who are our customers and the demographies around it, mm -hmm. or simply bring in the data, quickly set it up, and generate insights mm -hmm. from it. Okay. Therefore, you can do a lot with analytics and data science in the cloud mm -hmm. because the platform has already been built for you with analytics in mind. So it is right. bespoke mm -hmm. for analytics rather than wanting to set up or reinventing your wheel within your offices for it. Okay, interesting. Finally, now for businesses that are still operating in the manual methods, old methods of storing data of, you know, uh, doing their services, how important is adoption of this technology? Adoption of cloud technologies is is, is, is a wave already and, and it's a tsunami that's sweeping across the lay of the land, mm -hmm. carrying everyone around it. Therefore, for businesses who would like to consume cloud services, it is important not to jump the gun. Mm -hmm. You need to take into consideration your business needs, first of all. Why? why? There's always, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about asking the question why. Why? Mm -hmm. Therefore, why are, we, why are we in need of consuming cloud services? Mm -hmm. The next thing is how then are we going to consume them? And this is where Paddy is a cloud architect comes in to analyze how are you currently set up? What mm -hmm. services are you running? And how, what are the interdependencies between the applications? Mm -hmm. Once this happens, then we model for you how this will sit in the cloud. Therefore, we come up with architectural designs and we have continuous workshops mm -hmm. with you so that we chart the way forward. Okay. This is now in preparation for moving. Mm -hmm. Then we start moving test workloads first so that you can get the gist of it and you can observe. Maybe you put in two workloads there and mm -hmm. hell breaks loose and you have to take Absolutely. a step back to rethink it. But again, as you test, and it, it, is a good, it is good practice to test in cloud, in software development and the likes. Mm -hmm. Then you get the gist and you, you get to control the variables around it. 
And finally, once you're happy with that, then now you can continuously deploy your applications in the cloud right. and consume cloud services, giving your customers a happy experience. Mm -hmm. Important to note that you forgot is as mm -hmm. much as we have a shared responsibility model, mm -hmm. the weakest link is always you as the user. The weakest link uh -huh. is you who writes down your password. <laughs> oh, okay. The weakest link is you who doesn't set up budgets. Mm -hmm. Therefore, a lot of the breaches that we have observed is always a user who forgot to do something. Okay. So it is important, again, to sensitize all your users and all your resources within your organization mm -hmm. about the importance of security and the importance of following protocols and policies that are set up for them. Okay. What are some of the companies that have adopted this technology? I you know I'd said we are closing, but we're still closing. <laughs> what are some of the companies that have adopted these technologies? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not at liberty to disclose whom have moved to the cloud because uh. of uh, NDAs with mm. them. However, our government is a large user of cloud services and a citizen runs somewhere okay. and disclosed. But again, you access it over the web. Therefore, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it's a pu public or private cloud, then you're consuming cloud services. Mm -hmm. So as, a, as an end user, you get to consume cloud services regardless of public or private, but you are consuming cloud services. Okay. If you would like to know, or if organizations would like to know the companies that they could emulate to move to the cloud, mm -hmm. then this information is readily available from the cloud service providers' websites. Okay. You can see a list of all the companies that are consuming. And even during sporting events, mm -hmm. you get to see all these cloud service providers' ads. On Formula One, you see AWS all over the place. You see mm -hmm. Oracle all over the place on the vehicles. So oh, yeah. it just shows you that a lot of huge companies are already consuming these services. Netflix is a huge user because you can see the deployment models around it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, people are moving, but again, be careful about where you're moving and understand so that you can move properly. Okay, so have knowledge even as you plan on migrating. Yes. There, okay. We want to I want to finish lastly, completely. <laughs> Last <laughs> one, I promise. Yeah. This being... Uh, your career, your position, it's not something that people are used to hearing, a cloud architect. What does it take to, to become one? What does it take to become a cloud architect? Yeah, what are the so requirements? My, my, my background lies in telecommunications engineering. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as a telecommunication engineer, then you learn about internet protocols. So as a cloud architect, one, you need to understand cloud computing services, public cloud computing services. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what happens in AWS, what happens in Google, and what happens in Azure. Okay. And the baseline model for all of these are all the same. It's just the services that they offer mm -hmm. that are given different names. Okay. You need to understand networking so that if you're setting up Y254 in a hybrid model, then how are we connecting the two? Mm. You need some Linux skills because a lot of the machines in the cloud run on Linux. And there's a common saying that the cloud is a Linux playground. <laughs> Uh -huh. So what else do you need to understand? You need to understand communication skills. You need to be able to interact with your customers. Okay. You're not the legacy the computer guru with the hoodie <laughs> in the basement. You need to be able to articulate your ideas, mm -hmm. listen to what the client requires, mm -hmm. and draw up solutions for them. And I think all in all, with proper interest and a passion to understand the technology, Mm -hmm. then you would become a proper cloud architect. I know cloud architects who have backgrounds in medicine. So, so it's possible for anyone who yeah, has Yeah, and the interest. coolest thing about it is you don't have to go to hospital when you work with them. You just <laughs> ask them this idea. Therefore, uh, okay. you just need to have a passion to understand the technologies. Mm -hmm. That is the core cloud technologies. You need to understand security. You need to understand how Linux systems work. Mm -hmm. You need to understand how networking works. And you need to be able to articulate these ideas properly. Mm -hmm. so that you can talk with your clients and drop solutions for them. All right. Awesome. That's where we close it. Thank you very much. Great. Buddy. It's lovely to be here and always a pleasure talking about cloud technologies. Uh -huh. I would highly encourage people who are thinking about adopting the cloud mm -hmm. or becoming cloud architects mm -hmm. to take it up. It's a fun field. It's okay. an enjoyable field. There are sleepless nights when you drop solutions. And it's not for nads only. But it is highly <laughs> rewarding and it's not for nads only. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. You want yeah. to give your social handles? Yeah, no. I'm, so uh, I am not there anymore. <laughs> I, I oh, left. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, so, no problem. So, 
Thank you very much, Paddy. Uh, that has been a conversation around cloud computing. I hope you've uh, understood one thing or the other. And if you're in this space, well, now you know what, uh, if you, or if you want to get into this space, you know some of the things that are required of you. Uh, that's where we bring it to a close on Spot on Tech. But more is coming in entertainment with Grasha Maingi. So stick with us.